Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. We are going to learn how to create a sparkle brush here in Photoshop and use it to make these sort of sparkling trails that you see uh, quite often these days. A lot of people are using these and uh, for good reason, they look pretty cool. So I'm going to open this up using Photoshop and uh, F brings me to this full screen mode. I'm going to right click and just hit custom color here because I have a slightly darker gray set as my background. If you'd like to set a your own custom color, you can just right click out in this area, just hit set custom color, and you can set anything you like. You can set it to be bright blue if you want it, which I do not recommend, or you can set it to be bright green, which I also do not recommend. I use a 50% gray, so I just set my hue and saturation to zero and my brightness to 50, which is a nice dark gray. I'm going to zoom in, bring this thing up to full size. All right, so we're going to learn how to make this brush to create these kind of sparkle trails and these kind of sparkle trails. And I'll also show you just as a bonus how to make sort of this fiery looking uh, effect using this brush. So we got this photo here that I've just kind of thrown together, this guy jumping from outer space, diving back through the atmosphere. No parachute, no, no thought of that. So you know right off the bat it's got to be a dream because, well, maybe it's not a dream, but... This guy's jumping through the sky, and uh, he's on his own little layer there. And I'm going to create a new layer. And the first thing we need to do is create our own brush, our own custom brush. And it's not a matter of creating a custom shape, actually. We can just take one of the default Photoshop brushes and sort of mess it up a little bit to create our sparkle brush. So let's take a look at that. Come over here to the Tools panel and select the Brush Tool. Now going to downsize it quite a bit and I'm going to go window brushes. So it opens up the brushes palette. Okay, there's a whole lot of stuff you can do with the brushes palette and if you have not explored this palette, I highly suggest and recommend that you just mess around in it and see what you can come up with because there's all kinds of things you can do with brushes in Photoshop, all kinds of interesting uh, cool effects you can create and um, it's just a lot of fun and very useful at times. So we've got the brushes panel or palette here and um, depending on the size of the image or the uh, amount of this effect you would like, you're going to probably use a different size brush. Here with this particular image, I'm going to grab the three pixel hard edge brush. Now if you don't have these brushes there, that's no problem. Select this little menu right here just beneath the close button and come down and just hit load brushes and load those brushes or come down a little further and just select basic brushes and Photoshop will ask you should I replace the brushes with the brushes from basic brushes .abr which is just the brush library file that Photoshop has hit OK and it's going to replace them although it doesn't look like any change was made here because I already have these brushes loaded and it's the basic brushes that I'm going to be using so these brushes are uh, available with Photoshop when you buy Photoshop this is nothing you have to go out and get these are just here so grab the three pixel hard round brush. The uh, first thing we're going to do is increase the spacing here. Let's keep going until we get a decent amount of space between each dot. Right around here around 500 looks pretty good. You can see we've got some good spacing. Let me get, get a larger brush size so you can see what that looks like. I'm just increasing the spacing to around 500. So we've got a decent amount of space with the smaller brush. It looks a little different. It looks like they're a bit tighter, but that's fine. Around 500 looks like it's a nice uh, distance between each dot that we're going to be laying down. Because remember, this is supposed to look like sparkles, not like a solid painted line. So we're looking for a way to spread out these dots. All right, the next step we're going to do is come over here to Shape Dynamics. And we want to increase the size jitter to 100. If you have a pen tablet, I recommend that you turn pen pressure on. I have a tablet, so I'm going to turn pen pressure on. If you don't, just leave it off. Photoshop will uh, automatically randomize and jitter the size for you. And all the size jitter is, is the um, variation. You can think of it as the size variation, not size jitter, but size variation. So it's going to be laying down everything from very tiny three pixel uh, dots, so which really they technically won't be three pixel anymore, but much smaller, all the way up to the three pixel dots. So 100% size jitter is just the maximum amount of size variation between all of the dots that you're laying down. So it's just going to give it a very randomized, you know, these are just sparkles flying kind of look. Minimum diameter, we're going to increase that to about 25. So that's restricting the amount of variation we allow the size jitter to make. 
Okay, we're saying, yeah, you can make it go really tiny, but only 25% uh, smaller. So 25% is our minimum diameter. Angle jitter, we're just going to leave that at uh, none. Although you could give it a little bit of angle jitter. We could throw in maybe about 20. We're going to leave control for that off, however. Roundness jitter, I'm putting up to 100, and I'm setting that to pen pressure. And the minimum roundness, again, we're going to just leave at 25. Okay, last but not least, we're going to apply some scattering to this brush. We are going to scatter uh, this brush a little bit. Let's, well, number one, check on both axes and jack up the scattering to, ooh, let's try about 700 there. That looks pretty good. You probably can hardly see what's going on down here in this area if you're just watching along. But if you're following along, you can probably see somewhat better. <laughs> now we're going to up the count. Let's just use my up arrow key, go up one, two, three, four, five. Let's do six. Now with the count at six, you can probably see much easier what's going on. And I'm going to just push the count jitter all the way up to 100. So the amount of sparkles that are going to be coming out every time you lay down a brush stroke is going to be varying by the maximum amount possible. Again, this is just to give us a more, much more randomized look. And we're going to set the control for this to pen pressure. Again, only pen pressure if you have a tablet. So that's it, this is our brush. I'm gonna come up here to brush presets and I'm gonna hit the new brush button to save this brush as sparkles. And there we go, we've just made the brush. Now, let me show you how to create those sparkles. Layer five, I'm going to rename it sparkles. And uh, let's start uh, painting a little trail of sparkles coming out of this guy's feet. First thing we want to do, however, is switch our foreground and background colors. We want to paint in white to make it easier to see what we're doing. So I'm gonna hit this little arrow Notice the hotkey for it is X, so I can just hit X to swap them. And I'm going to use my, pat, uh, my pen, my Wacom pen, to paint sort of this trail of sparkles coming out of his feet. All right, so I'm going to build up some sparkles around his feet, and then I'm just going to start painting out away from his feet and just sort of letting those sparkles just kind of trail off into the night. That's the advantage of having the pen is you can re re uh, relieve pressure as you move up toward outer space here. So you can really make it look like they're just kind of fading off and disappearing. If you don't, you can just do the best you can with your mouse. And uh, if need be, you can always use a mask, come back in with a mask and edit that way. Or if worse comes to worse, you can use an eraser, but uh, use a mask if at all possible. So now that we have this sort of trail of sparkles coming out of his feet, I'm going to make a couple coming out of his hands here, just like he's falling right through the sky, and one coming off of his head as well. The one coming off his head is going to be very small, but it will be there. Now I'm going to take this sparkles layer and I'm going to duplicate it three times. So I'm just going to control J. If you're on a Mac, that would be command J. One, two, three. You can see that makes it much brighter. Now we have four sparkles layers. I'm going to close up my info palette so we can see the layers palette. One, two, three, four sparkles layers. I'm going to select these three sparkle layers. I'll click the top one, hold down shift, and click the bottom one. If you're using a version of Photoshop older than version CS2, just select the top one and hit Command or Control E to merge that down, and hit Command or Control E again to merge that down. So now we have three of those four sparkle layers in this bottom sparkles layer. Click the eyeball for the top sparkles layer to shut off the visibility of that layer. And I'm going to select this bottom sparkles layer and we're going to blur it. So we're going to come up here to filter. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. Blur. Gaussian blur. And we're going to give this a between a 2 and a 5 pixel blur for this size brush. Again, it's going to depend on... Um, how big your document is, how big a brush size you made it, but basically you want to really blur these uh, pretty well. So let's try three here. That looks pretty good. If the effect starts to look weak after that amount of blurring, you can duplicate the blurred sparkle layer, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Command or Control J, brightens that right up. Command or Control E to merge down, and that merges those two layers together. So we've got this kind of blurred trail of sparkles. Another way to um, quickly brighten this up would just be to apply another Gaussian blur to it. So just go filter, Gaussian blur. Blurs at another time, which makes it look uh, you know, even less visible, but no problems. Come up here to edit and just go fade. And we're gonna set the mode to overlay. So that brightens that up. 
So there's another way to uh, really brighten that up. And we're gonna keep that just like that. That's looking pretty darn nice. Next, we want to colorize this blur layer. So I want to create a new adjustment layer. I'm gonna hit the new adjustment layer icon right here, this circle that's half black and half white. Select that and choose hue and saturation. Now before doing anything, I'm just gonna hit okay. And I wanna clip this color layer to this blurred sparkles layer. So I'm gonna hold down my alt key. There will be option if you're on the Mac and click the boundary or the border line of these two layers where they touch here in the layers panel. You can see that this hue saturation layer now is clipped to the sparkles layer. Basically clipping, it just means that it is only gonna affect the filled pixels of the layer below it. I'm gonna double click on the hue saturation icon to open up the dialog. Check off the colorize box. And the first thing we need to do is darken this up. So let's move brightness down to about negative 40. Push saturation all the way up to 100. You can see we're starting to get some red smoke, it looks like, coming out of him. Now we're gonna we're slide the hue around. Let's try for like a yellowish, maybe a yellow green. That looks pretty good. Maybe we can brighten it up. No, I wanna definitely keep it dark. Just like that looks pretty good. It's almost orangey. Maybe we're gonna try to make it a little yellower. Just like that looks fine. Hit okay. So there we go. We've got this yellow dust coming out of this guy or this yellow smoke, which you know is fine. Now we want to turn this top layer back on. Now you can see that it looks like we've got some sparkles going on. We can select this sparkle layer and come up here to layer, layer style and choose outer glow. We're going to try giving this layer a just a light white outer glow layer. You can see that that really is going to give it some nice fill. We're going to reduce the opacity a little bit right around 65, hit OK. You can see it really looks looking pretty good. Now we're gonna set this layer to overlay. There we go, that looks pretty good. Setting that to overlay is gonna make those white sparkles sort of take on some of that yellow color from the dust layer beneath it, as well as really making those uh, sparkles over the darker areas of the image start to disappear to really fade off up into the atmosphere where this guy presumably is plunging through. Now, just as a final uh, step to this, we're gonna duplicate the sparkles layer. So I'm gonna click and drag it down to the new layer button. Notice doing that disables the clip of my hue saturation layer and allows it to edit the entire image. So I'm gonna hold down the Alt key and reclip it to my sparkles layer and drag this blurred sparkle layer up here to the top where I'm going to set it to dissolve. And you can see that now it gives me all these really harsh white dots. I don't want quite that many, so I'm gonna reduce the opacity here. I'm just clicking next to the opacity slider, and you can just slide the opacity down. Now, using the opacity slider on a dissolve layer does not make it more transparent, but rather it gets rid of some of those dots. Notice the higher transparency, I've got more of those dots. I wanna reduce this down to like 20. That looks pretty good. And actually, I'm gonna drag this back below the um, sparkles layer just like that, and I'm gonna zoom in on it a little bit. You can see that the, all these dots are white. I want them to be yellow. So I'm gonna come up here to Image, Adjustments, Hue Saturation. I'm gonna choose Colorize, reduce the brightness again, right around 50, up the saturation to 100, and just slide this Hue Saturation, or the Hue, excuse me, slider, here in the Hue Saturation dialog, until those dots turn yellow. So I've jacked up the saturation to 100, reduced the brightness because those dots were white, and just shifted the Hue to about 62. Hit OK. Let's zoom back out. You can see that that looks much better. Really looks nice and sparkly there. Okay, now that is not the only advantage. I'm gonna select all these layers and hit Commander Control G just to group them. And we're gonna name it Sparks. I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna shut off that sparkle layer. And I'm gonna grab the pen tool here. And this is how you create that sort of fire effect, but that's not all we're gonna do with it. We're gonna just uh, use the pen tool. We're gonna draw out a nice little path here just sort of like this. Not really anything in particular, just, just a path. Come over here to the Paths palette. If you don't have the Paths palette open, go Window, Paths. And in the Paths palette, we're going to stroke this path with this brush. All right, so I'm gonna select that path. I'm gonna make sure that that sparkle brush is selected. All right, that's that new brush we created. And make sure you've got that path selected. You can right click on that path and hit Stroke Path or you can select the stroke path button here, down here in the bottom of the paths pal palette. So I'm gonna select that and we stroke it and we can actually get a nice randomized effect by stroking it several times. 
that eliminates the need uh, for duplicating that layer several times. So you can see we've got our nice sparkle trail here. Notice also with the path, it fades the edges automatically for you, which is pretty nice. Um, you can override that, I believe, by coming into the brushes palette and shutting off the size jitter entirely, I think. I don't recall. I haven't used this without size jitter in quite some time. But you can mess around with it and you can use paths to uh, get that fading there on the edge of your paths, which is very useful. However, that's not what we're going to do with this. So we've just got our path stroked here. And uh, we're going to duplicate this layer and shut off the layer on top. We're going to blur this bottom layer. Go filter, Gaussian blur, and edit, fade Gaussian blur. And just set the mode to overlay. And that looks pretty nice. Now, we are going to use a hue saturation adjustment layer. Actually, I'm not going to use an adjustment layer here. I'm just going to go images, adjustment, and hue saturation. And we're going to colorize it, reduce the brightness to uh, right around 50, between 40 and 50, up the saturation to 100. And I'm just going to slide this until we've got a nice orange. That looks pretty darn good. I'm going to duplicate this layer just to make it more intense. Command or Control E to merge those layers. I'm going to turn on my top layer and set that to overlay. Now I'm going to duplicate my bottom layer and set this layer to dissolve. I'm going to zoom in on this dissolve layer, however. Notice the sparkles here are orange. You can tell that the dissolve layer, which is the only layer that's on now, they're orange. Number one, I want to reduce the opacity. So I'm going to come in here and reduce it to, oh, let's say around 40. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to go image, adjustments, hue saturation. And I just want to shift the hue here. I want to make these dots all red. That's really going to give this whole trail a pretty fiery look. When I zoom out, you can tell that now it looks much more fiery. I can reduce the opacity of that dissolve layer, take away some of those red dots, or to give it more to increase the amount of red that our orange gets. So that's how you create that kind of sparkle brush here in Photoshop. That is a really cool brush and there are a whole lot of techniques, a whole lot of different styles and things you can do with that brush. And that's how you do it. So I hope you learned something from this one. Please go check out the site. That's www.tutvid.com. Thank you very much for watching.